If you want to improve your running performance or you're struggling with constant injuries but you don't have the time on your hands for a full-blown strength training regime, the good news is I've got five basic strength exercises that every runner should be doing. So the first exercise we're going to touch on is the squat. Now squat is a really good exercise because it's focusing on more than just one muscle group, namely glutes and quads. Now if we think about quads for running, in particular downhill running, we really want strong quads and strong glutes. You've often heard doctors or physios talking about your glutes being too weak or your glutes not firing appropriately. And it's exactly this reason why the squat is a brilliant exercise to really target strong glutes. You work in a closed chain, so your lower back, your glutes, your hamstrings are all connected. And if you can have strong glutes, it does help with injury prevention in various parts of the lower body. So how do we do a squat? Technique here is absolutely key. The first thing we want to look at is our feet position. You want to have your feet slightly wider than your shoulder width apart. A lot of people stand with their feet too close together. Feet just outside of shoulder width apart. If you do struggle with poor hip mobility, you can have a slightly wider stance that will allow for improved range of motion in the squat. You want to try and get a feel for your weight distribution that your weight is on your heels. You can almost curl your toes up slightly so that you've got very little weight on the front of your foot. Then, focusing on shoulders and back, so getting the upper body position right, I'll often use the cue shoulders back, chest out. If I just show you from the side, I'm not necessarily referring to leaning back when I say shoulders back. I'm talking about just squeezing the shoulder blades together and puffing the chest out. So you want to keep a nice strong upper back position and then bending at the knees, squatting downwards, trying to keep looking up ahead of you. So it is absolutely important that we're pushing the bum backwards and sitting deep. Think of sitting down onto a chair or sitting onto the toilet. You shift your weight backwards naturally and you don't want your chest pointing down towards the ground. So weight back on your heels push the bum backwards, shoulders back, chest out, and get your eye line looking straight ahead of you rather than down at your toes. It's important here that at the bottom of the movement, your knees do not extend past your toes. So you really want to be shifting back that your knees are in line with the toes, nice and deep into that squat or as much as your range of motion allows, and then from there, standing up nice and strong, fully extending the body, so straight knees, driving the hips forward. You can even squeeze the glutes at the top of that movement, standing nice and strong, and then we start the process again, shifting the weight back, bum driving back, and down into that squat movement. The second exercise we'll dive into is the arabesque. Now the arabesque can be quite a complicated exercise in terms of focusing on certain trigger points. The main thing here is this is what we call a hip hinging exercise. Because this is a single leg exercise as well, it does allow for balance and stability around the ankle and the foot, as well as then obviously targeting glutes and hamstring work. Starting on one foot, so let's start on the right leg. Starting on the right leg, standing up nice and tall, you want to just relax the knee. So pop the knee out of a locked position, and that knee angle needs to stay like that for the entire movement. This is not a single leg squatting exercise, so we're not bending at the knee throughout this movement. You want to just remove the lock out of the knee and keep that angle the same. As I mentioned, the hip hinge action, so we'll always start with the upper body, shoulders back, chest out, focusing on a nice flat back. So if you had to imagine putting a broomstick down your spine, you really want to focus on trying to keep a nice flat back throughout this motion. So starting the movement of the arabesque, keeping the weight again more on the heels, you want to drive your hips backwards. So that's where the hinging comes at the hip. Drive the bum backwards, almost folding your torso over. So now your chest down towards the floor, drive the hips back, Remember that knee angle doesn't change at all, so it's very slight angle in the knee, just that it's not locked. 
leaning over, torso down towards the ground, and you want to get your back leg, so in this case your left leg, up nice and high behind you. It's important that when you're at the bottom of that movement, you almost want to be in a T shape. So torso down, back leg up, as far as your range of motion does allow. There's no real need for you to try and get your head and your shoulders below your hip level. So getting into a nice T shape, that back leg up nice and high, and then from there, standing up, really focusing on pushing those hips forward. You should feel hamstrings, you should feel glutes as you're standing up. Drive that hip forward, and again, standing up nice and tall. In the top of the movement, you can lock the knee out, and then unlock the knee, and we'll start again for the next repetition. One key area I would like you to focus on with the arabesque is when you are pushing the back leg backwards, try not rotate at your hips. You want to try and drive that leg backwards rather than making an arc motion behind you. So keeping the hips nice and square, both hip bones pointing forward, bending down into that arabesque position and standing up nice and tall at the top of the movement. The third exercise we're going to get into is the step down. Now the step down is a really good exercise for beginners and really targets the quadriceps. This can also be done nice and slow, and by doing it slow means a good isometric movement or contraction in the muscle. And getting these quads strong is absolutely key for downhill running in particular. So it really does allow us to condition ourselves a little bit rather for that eccentric loading that comes and that happens with running. Let's get into it. Our step down, you wanna be on a small step or a small box typically 20 to 30 centimeters high, doesn't have to be massive. Standing up on one leg, think about your natural stride or your natural walking, stepping down off of a step. We want exactly that, but with a little bit more technique focused. Let's start on our right leg. Left leg, we want to just gently, as we're striding forward, focus that the weight on your right leg is still on your heel. So with any of these standing motions, you don't want to be up on the toe, you want to be shifted back onto your heels. It is key that you do want to be driving your bum back a little bit. So standing up on that step, as your left leg starts moving forward, you want to drive your hips back, so your bum back a little bit. That allows the leg you're standing on, so your right knee, not to extend past your right toes. So remember, we always want to be shifting backwards. Then we'll gently step yourself down, nice and slow, weight backwards, as though you're doing a single leg squat. So think about a squatting technique still, but now just on one leg. Gently step down, you don't actually transfer weight onto the left leg. All you're going to be doing is touching that left leg on the floor or the lower step below you, and then with the right leg that you're standing on, driving back up into a nice straight position. Think about driving forces through the heel and not your toe. So again, hips back, weight on the heel, gently tap the left foot on the floor in front of you at the bottom of the movement, and with that right leg driving up nice and strong, push the hips forward, and then repeat into the next repetition. You can do all of the exercises or all of the reps on one side before moving across to the other side. The next exercise is our glute bridge. Again, as I mentioned, really having strong glutes and working glutes is beneficial for multiple reasons. Not only driving forces in your running and forward motion, but also in making the rest of your structures and the link between your upper body and lower body nice and strong that helps prevent the little niggles and injuries in other places in the body. So, the glute bridge, how do we do it? You're gonna lie down on your back. You wanna have your knees bent at 90 degree angle with your feet on the floor. I usually use the tip of really trying to drive your heels into the ground so you can almost angle your foot up and actually have your toes pointing up towards the roof. Lying on your back, 90 degree knee angle, heels digging into the ground, hands at your side. So it just helps for a little bit of a more stable base is placing your hands on the floor next to you. And from here, 
we are really going to force your hips up nice and high. So driving force down through the heels, drive those hips up into the air and at the top of that movement imagine squeezing your glutes as tight as you can. So you really want your hips up as high as you can get them. You'll hold it there for a second or two and then gently let your hips back down to the ground into that lying position again. Seems like a pretty simple exercise but the more you do it you really will start to feel proper glute activation. If you find that you're adapting really quickly to the glute bridge and you're finding it to be quite easy there are ways for you just to make it slightly more advanced. What I would recommend doing is then instead of having your hands on the floor in front of you you can place your hands together and your hands up in the air. By doing that just allows a little bit more torso and trunk stability because you're forcing yourself to stabilize a little bit more and not roll side to side as you're driving your hips up. So hands together up in the air pointing towards the roof and exactly the same drive down the hills into the ground hips up into the air hold it for a second or two and relax before starting the next repetition. Exercise number five the calf raise. Now this is a really good exercise if we think about the running action or the running stride. It focuses largely around ankle mobility and that driving action that you do in every running stride and every step you take thousands of times in a training run or a race. So how do we do a calf raise? Pretty simple, feet together. You want to try and focus on keeping your knees locked for this movement. A common mistake I see with a calf raise is people using their quads, so bending the knee and driving up as though they're doing a squatting type action. We are not trying to work the quads, we are working the calves. So knees locked, hands at your sides and you want to step up high onto your toes. Think about getting as high up onto those toes as you possibly can. Upwards motion, think about really trying to get as high up onto your toes as you can. So nice and high, driving upwards onto your toes for that calf raise. Again, hold it there for a second or two. And then importantly, gently letting yourself back down to the floor. I see a lot of people drive up nice and strong into a calf raise and then just flop back down to the floor. Have a little bit of control in the movement. One thing I want you to really try and focus on is not to have lateral movement or back and forth movement rather. So what I mean by that is when we're doing the calf raise, you don't want to be swinging your body back and forth. You want to be driving straight up and straight down in that motion. That just allows you not using any momentum to get yourself up and you really are driving out the muscles and activating and controlling this contraction properly. So knowing these strength exercises and doing them is one thing, but if you want to improve your running, you need to focus on this one thing that could really be holding you back. So go watch this video next to uncover the secret to becoming a much better runner.